So, hi, Chels, how you doing? Good, how are you today, Nicole? Good, good to see you again. Looking forward to continuing our conversation about faults. And uh, seems appropriate to go in flipping since we talked about level six, seven last week. It's a good segue because like we said last time, you know, that six, seven vault is two thirds of the vaults anyway. And the deductions are exactly the same. So would you mind running through you know what what the deductions are from from entry through to repulsion from the beginning we can take book form leg separation knees bent arch body core technique with that like with the knees and stuff in the first flight phase and then when they're on the table we can take shoulder angle elbows bent your leg form again and then we can take height distance, direction. So when it comes to the flip, you know, we've got tuck, pike, and I was going to say straddle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been doing preschool gymnastics with my kids for the last month. So um, we've got tuck, pike, and layout, and then obviously twisting. But when it comes to body position, those are the three choices. And and they're just that. They are choices. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the first big separator once we start flipping is what what is the shape and what is the body position and then how well are you doing the body position um, you know starting with the tuck i would say uh, some of the things that i see are a lot of times actually insufficient tuck um and then with the pike same thing it's it's got to be a, a clear pike and then our big one is the layout and, you know starting with the tuck though they can get into a nice tuck position and it's clean fantastic what, what do you notice a lot that's happening at the end of that tuck well, if it's not a super strong vault, they're staying in the tuck too long. They're not opening before they land, and then you land with your chest down. Um, I mean, they're a result of not getting the right angle in your block and getting it up height. And then, like I said, you're staying in the tuck too long. So if you have a really, really great block and you're not ready for a layout, like we kind of think about it, a tuck or a pike would be better. You, can, you don't have to stay in that shape super long, show that nice shape, and then open up. So that, that would be the goal. Yeah, and that's three tenths. That lack of open is three tenths. That's that's huge, and then it's it snowballs. Like we were talking about the snowball effect last week when we were talking about six seven vault. It snowballs. You don't open up out of that tuck. Well, then your chest is going to be down when you land. So you've got the up to three for lack of open, which is probably because you weren't high enough, and then you've got the up to two for your chest down on the landing. So there's five right there, and that's big. And it, and it's the same thing that happens with the pike vaults as well. So they you know. And, they hold that pike and crank it around because they don't have enough height and then up to three for lack of open and up to two for chest. So down. all in an instant, that five tenths can happen really quickly. And, and that's a big difference, you know, once the kids start flipping and that's the big difference in score. And then we have our favorite, to lay out or not to lay out. Oh, yes. <laughs> That is the question. <laughs> that is the question. We would like the hips to be open. That doesn't mean it has to be arched. You can be a little bit rounded, but once your hips are closed or you show that little bit of a pike, is that's when we're going to be questioning whether or not to award the layout or to call it a pike. And me, especially, like I've been judging uh, elites more and seeing more layouts that way. And if your hips are closed at all, if you're showing any little slight pike, even for the shortest amount of time, it's a pike. Working on getting the layout the hips open the whole time you can show a slight pike down but then you're gonna get the deduction for that so, so I want to go back to what you said about you know awarding a layout or a pike and if it does have that hip angle it's, it's not gonna be called a layout so the start value will drop but then on top of that now yes it's a pike but it's not piked enough so now you have a body position deduction of insufficient pike so there's a lot of things that happen when the attempt to a layout happens and it's not quite laid out Exactly. If it's almost there, it's not enough pike. Even if we call it a pike, you're going to get that for insufficient pike. Yep. Yep. So that's that's a really tricky one. And it happens a lot. And then, you know, just strategically thinking, you go, okay, if, if you're high enough to do that open of a pike, then why not do a, a nice, clean, sufficient pike and open up out of it? Because now you've got, you're beating others who are not opening up at the end. So use that ability to go up in the air and almost lay out and just go pike open. Um, Cause we don't see that very often. You know, that vault is gonna score higher than uh, an attempt at a layout that then pikes down and has body position issues. Exactly. Uh, do you notice anything with the body position and twisting that you wanna talk about? You know, for 10, we do see twisting vaults, but I know you've got a lot more experience and have seen a lot more of those. 
it depends. There's there's some form issues that go in with the twisting because you're some people start to twist right off the table. Then you're getting in a little more bend. Your legs cross. That was my next favorite. <laughs> Lots of legs crossing, and generally when your legs are crossed, your knees are soft. So you're getting both of those um, added into that equation. And a lot of times too, some people start twisting a little soon or soon before they're ready and then they're piking down they're losing their height because they're not finishing their block because they're worried about the twist okay so yeah that that's pretty much the majority of those those back flipping vaults okay. the, the souks and your chinkos and then we have our handspring front vaults our front flipping vaults or our round up half on entry vaults but any of those front flipping vaults it's, it's not that different. I mean, we've still got, like you said at the beginning with the form coming onto the table and the position and shoulder angle and arm bend and, and angle and height, all of that is exactly the same. And then when they're flipping in that tuck or pike position, again, same thing. Is it a tuck? Is it a pike? Is it opening up prior to landing, which is up to three? And then where is the chest? So th there's not a huge difference in, in the expectation or in the deductions that lie in that box. It's just, we don't see it as much. Right. But this is also for people who are newer to the deer chinkos as well. For a lot of the handspring fronts, you're going to see a lot of the tucking begin too soon. Start tucking like right, some of it even right off the board or really close onto the table. So trying to hold that position, the leg straight until you're getting in the air. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, Chelsea, it was really nice talking to you again about vaults and hearing your insight and and sharing some perspective and hopefully it helps. I, I hope so, that is the goal. We just wanna share information. Anything that anybody watching this wants to hear about, feel free to contact us. You can send a message, you can comment, and we are on all the social medias, at my gym judge. And uh, we will see you guys next week for Talking Tense. Awesome, thank you. All right, see you later. Bye. Bye. Somebody see a black screen. Same. I can hear you. <laughs> awesome. This is going swimmingly today. <laughs> well, you oh, <laughs> we were so oh. close. <laughs> I'm finished, honey. Until you have. <laughs> we can do this. We can do this. You have. Right, so hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm gonna say that again.